Hi, Captain. Hello. What you hit is you walk into that window.
you'll grab that handle one more time. Yeah. We're going to get the tail wheel spun around. So we're going to go forward or your way a little bit first, then forward. Chalk up another one. Just give him a little more room to okay. when he comes in behind me. Oh, so we're gonna walk around the airplane. Should we throw some chalks on it or no? I'll sit. <laughs> Video gets his performance from the engine propeller combination. Lycoming GO480, 295 horsepower geared engine. So you can look in here. This is the gear case. Yeah. Here, prop governor comes off the gear case. Being geared, it's 3400 RPM at takeoff. Prop's only turning about 2170. Larger, yeah, turning slower, you need larger prop, more torque, more thrust. Important for getting off a short field. And then it's got a big wing, leading edge slats, automatic, all four are independent of each other. Angle of attack, aerodynamically controlled. So push one in, push one there. And that's not a new design. These are called Handley Page leading edge slats. A British guy came up with this idea back in the 1920s. Yeah. Leading edge slats. It has a big Fowler flap, 40 degrees of flaps. I'll crank them down. Because they're completely mechanical. Completely mechanical with a hand crank in the overhead. And there's my indicator. 10, 20, 30. And all the way down is 40. 40. So. So the leading edge slats, the flaps, give it the capability to fly slow, all that high level. They made the Helio capable to fly controlled level flight at 26 miles per hour. They can fly slow, they had to put in some special things in the controls to get the controllability. So the aileron is a deep cord aileron. Wow. Okay, most ailerons are the same as the flaps. Yes. So it's a deep cord aileron. So even though it's short, it's still about the same surface area as if it came out farther here past the wingtip. But beyond that, if you step behind the wing and look up on the top, you'll see spoilers or what Helio calls interceptors. So you see those red interceptors come up on wow. the other side? One more time. Okay. So they are interconnected with the ailerons to give roll control when you're really slow. Does that help uh, yaw? What actually helps yaw is that this the, the pivot point, the hinge point for the aileron is not at the at the leading edge of it. This actually ah, comes down below the yeah. leading edge of the aileron comes below the surface of the wing, and that helps with yaw. And then, nothing special about a stabilator. Right. That it's a big one. So again, to give positive pitch control at slow speeds, they had to go with a large uh, stabilator. Tall vertical, tall rudder. All Massive. That to, give it, to give it controllability. Now, everything in aviation is a compromise. Yeah. So, <laughs> big tail surfaces, big wings, it's not a fast cruiser. Yeah. 65% power is going to cruise about 118 knots. Mm. Um, big tail, catch a gust, it makes it a very difficult airplane in a crosswind. Mm. So, also, to, for off, uh, soft field unimproved performance, they place the main landing gear forward of the firewall. Most tail draggers, the main landing gear is about where that step is. Mm. Okay. So that means on those airplanes, if you stomp on the ground, you're going to nose over. Yeah. This airplane, I can land. All Wheel landing, three-point landing, with the brakes locked, and we're not going to know those. Um, but again, the compromise is you have this big long arm right out to the 
out to the mains. And your mains are even further forward, forward in your uh, center of gravity, so uh, uh, all of that plays into the crosswind performance of the airplane. Original Helio came out with a 10 knot demonstrated crosswind component. Huh. To compensate, they put Goodyear crosswind gear on it. Good, uh, um, gear that you could unlock and they would pivot 20 degrees left and right. So you could actually land in the crowd. Huh. Uh, and then it went to 25 demonstrated crosswind component. <laughs> Most Helio operators have replaced those gear because they're no longer built. Parts are expensive, they're hard to maintain. Yeah. With uh, Cleveland wheels and brakes, which give better braking, but you've lost that ability to caster the main gear. And so, they caster down at the bottom of the strut? Yeah, they caster. Or it's not a strut. Well, but actually, when they caster, the Goodyear wheels actually caster right at the axle. So now yeah. this is not a Goodyear, so this one right. won't caster. Uh, but they were right at the axle. You could had a uh, uh, release in the in the cockpit. You pull it out. It would release a pin. There was a cam that sat here. Pulled the pin. Let these gear huh. turn that way. So this was the Cleveland. It it does not caster, uh, but it does have a larger uh, brake puck surface areas. Also, yeah. it's got the brake pucks up above the Goodyear wheel and brake had the brake puck down here which mm. it, on muddy strips you could get mud up in it things like this so this gives better braking but you lost the caster capability mm -hmm. so the helio pilot says well there's a crosswind on that runway i'm going to angle across and reduce some crosswind component so the primary instructor says stay on the center line stay on the center line helio pilot comes over and says oh, that's a pretty strong left crosswind i'm going to come in and land like that and I'm going to use all that runway, gonna, the width. Going to use the runway width to <laughs> overcome some of that. Even this runway, it's only 75 feet. If we had a stronger crosswind than we had today, I would have gone to the opposite side of the runway, and I would have angled across for takeoff and landing. Working so, it, yeah. But, uh, just to remove, reduce that crosswind component. So that's some things about the idiot. What year is this? This one is a 1972. This airplane has a real missionary history. Um, we bought it new, sent it to Ecuador. It was in Ecuador for about 15 mm. years or so. Um, when we finished up the aviation work we were doing there, we brought it back to the U.S. And it went in mothballs for a few years, and uh, they needed another Helio in Indonesia. So it was uh, uh, overhauled and, and sent to Indonesia, and it was there for another 15, 16 years um, before they started converting to um, Pilatus Porters. Mm -hmm. And then this one came back to the to the states, and we put it in the missions of the airport program. So it's it has a real pedigree of flying in some of the most remote parts of the world, whether it was the Amazon jungles of Ecuador or the mountains of Papua Indonesia. Yeah. Is there anything this can do that the Kodiak can't? Can land on a sh much, much much shorter field. Yeah. Yes, it can even land. We would use a shorter field. Than even the porter. Mm. The porter can land on a very short field, but when you have it filled up to gross weight, that's a lot of mass to get stuck. Yeah. And so the helio could land on a, a shorter field. My shortest field in the Philippines was 470 feet, and I could still take in about 850 pounds of payload into that strip. Wow. Um, and we were usually down and stopped in half the runway and airborne in, in two thirds of it <laughs> um, with, with those loads. That's um, fantastic. <laughs> so the Kodiak will lift more, the Porter will lift more. Mm -hmm. um, better high altitude performers than the Helio yeah. uh, with the turbine engines. Uh, in Indonesia, some places where they flew the Helios, they take off and to get over the ridges to go to the next airstrip, they have circle. circle. Yeah, climbing. Uh, circle. With any uh, heavy load in the Helio, once you get in the tropics, you get above 7,000 feet and it's a slow climb. Yeah. And they go up, circle, circle, over, and then circle down into the next valley to land. And it might take them 35, 45 minutes to get over there. The border goes. And uh, they turn that into a 15 minute flight. <laughs> At one time, we had the uh, largest civilian fleet of Helios in the world. Yeah. We had 25 Wow. Places around the world. The only one had more airplanes with a 
the CIA <laughs> and the Air Force. But, uh, um, we have no more overseas today mm -hmm. because of aging aircraft issues and Afghan issues. Yeah. And that's why they've been replaced by the, the porters in Indonesia, um, Kodiaks, 206s are being replaced by Kodiaks. Um, so we're converting to turbine fleets where we can. Because we may not get Afghan, but we can get Jet A. Huh. Every country has an airline, or they have military that use Jet A. Jet A is available and usually much cheaper than Afghan. Mm. So, but we keep two Helios, the jars, for PR functions like this, but also as transition trainers to the porters. Yeah. Pilots that come to us have their commercial and turbine porters. High performance. Yeah, turbine porters. Oh, okay. <laughs> high performance. Most of them have very low tailwheel time. So before we start training them up in the porter, where they're going to start learning turbine as well as tailwheel, yeah. <coughs> we'll train them in the helio for stall heavy tail drag time uh -huh. and then transition them. So they're still working. They're still working. <laughs> they're still working.